It's saving. I mean, it's already recording. Oh, okay. Well, where were we? Um, what were we talking about? Oh, um... We're talking about setting up a new business and all the things that it takes. We're talking about making a Merchants. You're talking about merchants. Yeah, but making a website. So you mentioned the that merchants. you needed to make a website for your business. Yeah. What a merchant. Tra- uh, where actual transactions pass through. Oh, so like, yes. Let's say if you put a website, was... ideally you want to have a booking calendar. Yeah. And you want to take payments up front. Yeah. Mm. Right? Yeah. Especially oh. for new clients. Yeah. That might bail before then. So let's say you've got mm. someone booked and you've got two new clients and one day they both don't rock up because they haven't really deposited money towards your yeah. There's no commitment. Bookings. Yeah, there's no commitment. Yeah. 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 So is it a deposit or is it a full payment? Or like a full payment. payment. It depends yeah. how you set it up. It depends yeah. how you set it up. That's okay. the option. Yeah, you can set it up. Cool. So this is what I'm looking at now. But they're also going to do it, they're going to take a percentage. Oh. So depending who you use. So there's a merchant yep. service yep. that handles the transactions. So they usually take I think it's like up to two percent. Depends, right? Yeah. Well, Square said it, t- it takes just under two percent. It's like one point nine. One point seven five yeah. plus a third thirty thirty cents per transaction or something like that. Oh, so there's two payments. So you can do so you can do PayPal, which yep. they will rip you. They take a lot. Like, sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like yeah. two point six, two point eight. Then there's Stripe, <laughs> which is like one point seven five, I think, plus thirty thirty cents That's per transaction. Right. Yeah. And then there's like an actual thing, Wix one within the web builder. So, oh, yeah. So yeah, I'll probably yeah, go with Stripe. Yeah. 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 So you're building your own, but then you're using Stripe within your website. It's all the options are within the website builder. Within Wix? Yeah. So if you go oh. pay one payment method, you yeah. can it literally give you those three options. Mm. And then it will like redirect you to Stripe because you need yeah. like a subscription or whatever. Oh. But it's, it's the back end. So. Yeah. You can literally manage your whole business in there. Like it's like analytics. You can have membership. Fucking <laughs> laughing at you. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm so happy you got the camera. What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> You're a wix, mate. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You want some Eva? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, wix. Wix, wix, sober. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> He's staring directly in my eyes. You think sincere and helpful? I was, I was like jailer trying to help you. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you have an established business and I think it would benefit you. For now. <laughs> yeah. You can literally block out your regulars. Are you serious? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by serious? You can literally block out your work to work. It's done. It's, it's done. It's finished. Talk to me. Uh, Talk sorry, to me. Uh, to him. <laughs> Tell Z. 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 Tell <laughs> Can't do this. I wish for the coffee grain. <sighs> Don't blame this on my bed. Nah, that's not <laughs> Um, yeah, so. Bye, Ma. Oh, bye. 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 Social media is confronting. It's not social media. This, this, this is. This is. <laughs> this is. This is. How weak was this? This is. Um, fuck. This is automating your business. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So you can have a membership site on there, paid or unpaid. Like, this is all like within the platform. <laughs> 
Fuck you. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Stop saying. <laughs> Are you drinking? Day drinking? <laughs> <laughs> Does that miss out on the message where it says it's never too early for vodka? It's never too early for vodka. <laughs> anyway, you will learn on your own now. I deserve that. I deserve that. Yeah, so, so you're saying about memberships. Yeah, so you've got obviously movement plans and yeah. um, rehab sort of stuff. So you can create a video library yeah. where you can charge a small subscription fee so let's say 10 oh, bucks yeah, yeah. 10 bucks yeah. right yeah a, a month yeah where your clients or people that visit your website or members of the gym or whatever sign yeah, up yeah. to and get access to these things yeah right so you're it's basically from a business point of view it's your kind of like a gift gift for your clients yeah, so it yeah. can be for free for the first yeah. month and they yeah. can sign up for it yeah but it also puts the accountability on you to create content yeah that's really good that is really good right, right? yeah and yeah. you can literally just work your way from the feet up yeah. And you can do a hundred videos if you want to. Yeah. Because they don't have to be super specific. descriptive, specific. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of proofreading for me. Don't do a hundred videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to do a thousand now. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. You do a thousand yeah. videos. Yeah. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, Speaking of mashallah, she's offline. Or else you blocked me, maybe. <laughs> Should we be saying this right now? I don't know how to cut out stuff in the fucking pre- in the podcast. I <laughs> think uh, we can do that. Oh no 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 no! no, 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 no. We'll talk about that. Okay, I'm fine. Fine. How was training this morning? Yeah, it was really good. What did you do? Um, well, it was a bit of a deload because uh, last night I went pretty heavy. Well, last night was really good. Did you just, uh, the 200 bucks. I've seen the video. Oh, Where's the video? video? Are you serious? Yeah. Well, it didn't happen. Well, that's fine. It happened because my body knows it. Happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's why I deloaded today. <laughs> and then today, this morning, uh, no, nah, it was just speed stuff today. Like, yeah. like It was just muscle snatches over, uh, with overhead squat. And I did stagger stands, good mornings, and hamstring stuff, mm-hmm. which was good. Um, but last night was great. I had a really good session last night. Well, we had a good session last Sunday, which was... That's what epic, I, right? Yeah. And then, um, oh, I knew I was in training with that now. Yeah. No, I remember that time when you said it was, it was, it was two o'clock, but next thing you know, it's four. <laughs> well, it wasn't two because you obviously, because I saw him go to the gym at 11. So, luckily, we didn't make a decision. Oh, we did. But then you're like, let's make it about three, four o'clock. And then <laughs> no, was, was, that, that, was a, that was a two o'clock, but you were already at the gym with no, the was HQ. No, I was on the way to into. And then, I, and then, and then, um, saw the message come through. And then a message came through saying, I'm at the gym. I'm like, okay. And then I detoured. Show me. <laughs> why, why would I lie? I don't believe it. <laughs> 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 trust issues. <laughs> no, trust issues. You laughed in my face a few times. <laughs> oh, damn. That was my fault. I feel like that did not happen. What? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Did you do fucking training? Yeah. I haven't seen any videos. I've been training. I've been getting oh, three, three and a half sessions in a week. He hasn't tagged us in any. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I tagged. No, 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 I trained. No. I did the safety bar. So that. Where are we right now? <laughs> I'm just. I'm, I'm just literally going. I'm just going. Yeah, I'm just good. going through the program. Just so I reckon we've maxed out. <laughs> Have we maxed out though? Um, we've maxed out. The, maxed out the bench. So the feet up bench. So let's deal it. Um, feet up bench. We got six sets to four at one seventy. Yeah. So that's good. Last comp rep we did comp bench, we got we did six sets of five at one seventy. And then we went to doubles and triples. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Um <clears throat> safety bar. I fucked up. I ate too close to the workout. Yeah, that's right. That breakfast good. was oh, Sunday. Yeah, that's, 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 that's why that's why he's late. That's, that's why you were late. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. Sunday. Because you were like, oh, you know what's so funny? <laughs> Where I, how was I? It's just porridge, bro. <laughs> it's, pink. it's pink porridge. That actually makes it really sexy. Good. It looks really good. I was a little jealous. I was like, oh, we'll go. You, the new girl said, See, we'll go. go. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go. go. She loved like, the treatment, by the way. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask, how'd she go? How'd she go? Yeah, she Pain free. Pain free. Good. So. She invited Tony and I on Sunday to go there for breakfast as a thank you for referring you 
Really? Yeah. Did, you, like, did you get invited to breakfast? Did you get to breakfast? And I was the one that did the treatment. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one that, <laughs> that did the work. Fuck you, it fuck. you went to HQ. If you came to breakfast, I didn't hang on. It. <laughs> it's terrible. There's like a lot of puzzles. There's a lot of fucking holes pieces of the puzzle. Right. Anyway, right. that's between you and the new girl. What is okay. the issue with the breakfast? The issue with the breakfast anyway. I got an invite. She wanted to meet Tony. Oh, well, oh, well that's just not really money to do that. How was that? <clears throat> Good. Good breakfast. Mm. Over eight. So anyway, so way too close to the workout. Mm. And I felt good. Like first time in a long time, zero knee pain. Safety bar. We were oh, with the bands. Yeah, I'm like, fuck those bands. I mean, no knee pain, but my glutes are off completely, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we had bands. Yeah. So, I don't know, I think that... I did the 200 with bands too. Did you really? My fight, doesn't yeah. count. Bro, it was off. I was but it's not specific. You can't use a band on the platform. On the I don't want to be angry on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I'm in tears right now. <laughs> so... It was meant to be five by three. I worked up to three by three because I threw up into my mouth on the second round. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> okay. Oh, that would have been. But it was like from the warm up, from the warm up, like yeah. in the bottom position. As soon as I put my belt on, and the belt was on the last <laughs> hole, I got one of those. Uh, <laughs> so, pause, and then when I push, it's like, oh, I think it was like just coming up, and I'm head. just going. <clears throat> I'm just going to do one more set. <laughs> I'm going to do one more set. I want to do one more. So we got to the top way. I'm like, I'm going to throw up here. Keep, keep the camera rolling. It's good for views. Yeah. First rep. I'm like, okay. Less, bra- less brace. Second rep came up. Third oh, rep was good. Yeah. Right? By the third set, it was sitting here. I called it. Oh. I called it. If you watch the video, you'll see me unrack. And I, I got this, this weird twitch. I got... <laughs> That's the it's, normal, it's your normal Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that was 2.30. Wow. 2.30. 3 by 3 with extended pauses. That's so good. On a safety. Who would have thought G <laughs> knows what to do? I know. I heard he's a, a banker. banker. I heard, a banker. I heard he's a fuckwit. <laughs> a banker. <laughs> oh, man. Good. That's too good. So the plan is to squat tonight again? Yep. Don't eat too close. <laughs> no, no, I'm done. Yeah. I'm eating for yeah, I don't no, know. You're gonna eat something else. Three, three hours before, yeah. Mm, two. Two. Oh, actually, man. that's actually a good topic to discuss. What would you eat before? Like, I have a good story. Heavy <laughs> story. <laughs> you first. Though. No, because no, my story. story's fucking stupid. Bench you can get away with. You want to be nice and full. Yeah, I never really like really ate up for a bench though. Mm. I was never like, yeah. The, the 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 bar the weight on the bar in bench is never really sort of I don't well for me I don't really find it intimidating whereas like mm. but for you like the bench like, press is like a rest period between kind of kind of whereas, whereas like, I'm like yes please bench <laughs> this is where I get to catch up <laughs> to those fucking squatting fucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so let's talk nutrition. So my, I had, uh, funnily enough, I've had this funny, I've had this conversation twice this week. And it's because Adam um, oh, wow. has had his heavy sessions mm-hmm. and he's like, he was eating some lollies and I may or may not have allegedly stole some lollies out of him. No, you stole them. No, I stole them. You ain't no ninja. <laughs> you ain't no ninja. He didn't hear me. I don't have TikTok, but I have seen a lot of TikTok videos that have gone viral with you in the background recently. Stealing, stealing lollies. <laughs> Super heavyweight bodybuilder. I would have to go I ninja mode on. on. Fail. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's like, I can't eat too many, but I need the energy um, uh, because I'm going to throw up. And I was like, funny you say that. And Max was obviously there. It, funny you say that. Before all my, my big sessions, like heavy, anything above 400, like I get a little, I get a little antsy, a little anxious. Like, oh, fuck, have I eaten enough food? I haven't eaten enough food today. Have I eaten? I've got to eat. I've got to be full. I've got to be big. So every time I've had like a fucking a big, big and critical session, I've gone to like Macca's before and smashed like... <laughs> That's the worst thing you want to eat before. <laughs> that sits in your stomach. Bro, I go and I was seriously smashed. Like 
a, a large Big Mac meal and a Big Mac, McDonald's should sponsor us, <laughs> uh, and like gone and obviously had those sessions. Did you see anything wrong with those sessions? No. Perfect. So yeah. I'm like, that's now stuck in my head. Oh, now like yeah. every critical session, I have to have McDonald's before. Do you order the same thing? Same thing. So it's like, <laughs> so it's so like it's everything. Yeah. One of every pre-workout ritual for those kinda, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Except for yesterday. Yesterday, I, I, I didn't clean the entire day. So uh, mm. maybe it's because the weights are heavy enough. Yeah. I'm not yeah it's it's only 340. Okay. <laughs> Bare knees. <laughs> like, Jesus. My feelings. You did say 400 yeah. plus. So. Yeah. Because yeah. what happened, like what I, what, where that stemmed from was that when I was, when we were training at Body World, I used to be able to, and this is just like how degenerated my body has gotten. I used to be able to walk into the gym, like literally smash two Big Macs, walk into the gym, have 140 kilos on the bike, and start warming up 140 yeah. kilos on the bike. Oh, yeah. No belt, no yeah. nothing, yeah. just like, do, 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 do. Yeah. now, forget about yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> no, it's like empty bar. Oh my god, I can't get my arms back. <laughs> it starts feeling better. We should probably transition to a straight bar soon. Should we? Not really. No, no. not yet. Still playing with time still. I always used to think um, eating the day before and like a few days before is more important than on the day. Just eating That's what I feel. all the time. <laughs> yeah, important. I think so. All yeah. time. Not stressing <laughs> just about one day. Yeah. It's eating. But we all know what we should be eating. Yeah. 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 McDonald's. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Which Every is day. fast digestible. High <laughs> oh, guys, food. fast digestible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, yeah. was, who was in a rush to get to the bathroom the other day? Toilet? Bathroom water? Right, right. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> you wouldn't know. Would you? <laughs> wow. Actually, no, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. I still get into those situations without walking. <laughs> <laughs> It's just from your warm, cozy bed. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I just shit in the mornings only. Four or five times a day, right? That's regular. That's normal. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have conversations with people who ask me, like, how many times do you have a shit per day? I'm like, well, probably, I don't know, somewhere between three and five. Mm. And they're like, oh, I'd probably go number two. What, like once or twice every two days I'm like that's, that's not tough I feel like that's not good yeah that's not good it's one It's one of the questions I ask my clients and a lot of females that's the answer yeah once every couple of days yeah. water walking activity nutrition yeah what does it come down to I mean many things so oh, yeah, def yeah, definitely yeah. nutrition yeah. so then you're going to look at what they eat because mm. if they've got a healthy digestive system they should be able to digest yeah. that quickly yeah but a lot of girls mm. are embarrassed to Go do number two, yeah, especially like in the presence of their partners and stuff like that. So, they've I think they've been trained over the years to hold it in. <laughs> That's fuck, yeah, like that thing that I sent you the world record. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two. was done by female. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it's gone now. It's disappeared from the chat. Do I not see this? Was it a story? Was it a story? It was, a story? It was a, no, it was a, it was a oh, shared TikTok. reel. So, was it, um, TikTok? Was it TikTok? from what I remember, this woman. Wanted to break the record for the longest poo, like length, lengthwise, okay, lengthwise, right? So what are the so she's gone, so she's gone to one of the American universities, and what they've done is they've actually, <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, hey, I want, I want hey, to break this, this record. They're like, yes, you do, right? That's what I want to do. Check school. So they made her eat up all these high fiber foods, and the plan was not to go to the bathroom for seven days. I what? Yeah, it's for seven days, and they actually got most not a word of a lie. This is what it says in the story. I don't know how legitimate it is or not. It's probably not a butt plug. Yeah, to make sure they hold it in. It sounds like a good time, right? And then when, oh, she, was, when she was ready to go, wow. yeah, they actually used a bowling lane, and she was like shuffling along the bowling mm. lane as she was defecating. Mm. I'm gonna to have to look this up. Nah, nah, it's nah. it. I think this needs to be edited out. <laughs> Nothing will be edited. No out. way. This is gold. Are you serious? Mm. Yeah. So yeah. she's gone down to fucking AMF strike bar, yeah. and then she's taken a dump, and they've measured the dump on the bowling lane. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. What? Yeah. Mm. What the fucked up weird shit do scientists do? <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, it's disappeared. Yeah, it's, it's gone. probably expired. Yeah. No, it's gone. I told you it's gone. Because you went back to look for it, didn't you? <laughs> no, because our chat died, and it's like within like a few things. It is. Longest poop ever recorded was 26 feet. 26 yeah. feet? <laughs> What's that? Is that like 11 meters? Yeah, was it? In 1995, a woman in Ann Arbor, Michigan, worked in conjunction with yeah. a nutritionist yeah. to eat a super fiber rich diet to set a world record for the longest single excrement ever recorded. She successfully shat a 26 foot continuous log, the exact length of her colon. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> first of all, oh, I told you it's a bowling line. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Mm. We'll leave that. Okay. We'll leave it at that. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, so back to nutrition. <laughs> uh, eat your fiber. Eat your fiber. If you're, if you're, you know if what, you're like, going every other day, mm -hmm. eat What was fiber. it? 26 feet. 26 mm -hmm. feet. Yeah. I'm like impressed that it stayed together. Do you know what I mean? Like it didn't break up. Well, I just said it was the exact length of a column. So she had a column was fully, fully. Mm -hmm. So just on eight meters. Yeah. Yeah. In hell. She had a butt plug in, so it would have been like very condensed, compressed, like it would these guys were professionals that she worked with. Professional shit artists. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, that's too good. That's too good. Alright, so what would be the perfect pre workout? Food. I don't know. Not, not oh, comp day. Comp day nerves is involved and stuff like that. Yeah, I, like, I generally just, let's have, say, just have, generally have like chicken and rice. Like the boys now, what are they? Two weeks out from nationals. <clears> so yeah, final heavies. Out. Yeah, four weeks. Yeah, three, two, whatever it is. Squat day. Right? You're squatting at 6 p.m. What do you eat? When? Normal. Just so eat. Yeah. Normal. So, like I, like, I like to be full. Let's say you got a full time job. You finish your I like to be full yeah. when I. When I for squats, I like to be really full. Yeah. For deadlifts, I don't like to be full. Yeah. For benches, I don't really care. Yeah. Just as long as I have enough energy and I'm getting through it. Yeah. Warm. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I remember listening to um, mm. um, Eddie Hall talk about it and he was like eating during training. He, like he prefers to stay completely full through the entire process. Wow. Like a raw steak. In between sets. In between sets. Just, I'll just go normal. Normal. Well, it should be whatever you normally do. Yeah. Don't, don't fuck around. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll end up normal. shitting yourself. And not like 26 feet. It'll be fucking... It'll be a murder. It'll be a murder. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't do it. <laughs> no, I can't do it. You wouldn't try to do that. <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't. <laughs> Oh, it's a good coffee, Jay. Thank mm. you. Very <clears throat> good. Um, yeah. <laughs> How do you go to the next topic after discussing that? I'm still amazed it's stuck together for 26 <laughs> feet. I wonder if there's an actual YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take? Yeah, I, mean, I have fucking questions. <laughs> I have questions. So, yeah, questions about the cheese. So I can see so <laughs> there's scientists and they're like, all right, slowly, slowly, push. Not too hard. Now shuffle forward a little hold bit. On, okay, hold on, Push again. Good. There's spotters. <laughs> they, spot, they, spotters. they would be spotters. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. no. if you look at the photos, she's squatting in the mm. middle of a... She is. Yeah, she's squatting, she's squatting in a bowling alley. That's all right. Yeah, sure. But it's slippery. Why isn't she falling over? Imagine well, she would have waxed it. Fell into the <laughs> ruined the world record, and that's to start again. Did you know? I learned this. I, I don't, this is probably. I don't remember where I learned this. I think this was TikTok. But get it. <laughs> TikTok. You <laughs> thought TikTok. <laughs> your educational platform. <laughs> Listen. All right. Listen. <laughs> Guinness. Guinness made up the Guinness Book of World Records. Really. Apparently, Guinness. Guinness. You know they drink Guinness. Yeah. Apparently, that company made up the Guinness Book of World Records. Beer, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. whatever. Irish yeah. beer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because they did some research, some market research into what goes on in their pub, in the pubs. Yeah. And that people were more 
uh, inclined to drink more whilst in a trivia session yeah. with, with other people. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> So they started doing, and they're obviously the arguments around like, what's the biggest fuck, what's the biggest piece of shit yeah. that's ever been laid? Like, <laughs> more people, ah, Guinness, smash a Guinness. How fucked up is that? Yeah. It's genius. Like is genius. Mm. Should we answer some questions? Let's do it. Let's do it. Sure. Zara, do you have any questions? I got oh, no, camera slice questions. I got, I got, no, I got no questions. I love no camera slices. Yeah, we do. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Uh, we do. We do. Um, <laughs> So, right. have you had a tan square? I have no idea what that is. I know. I only know because that person asked me that as well. What's a tan square? Um, it's in that chat. I'm assuming it's a form of biscuit cake, <laughs> something. It's a caramel slice they have in New Zealand, but with a serious, with, with butter crumble on top. Ooh. Ooh. No, I haven't. Maybe has. I don't know what that is. What does it look like? Yeah. I don't know. I'll do questions after. Tan square. Well, I got no questions, so I'll be the Googler. <laughs> <laughs> Loser. <laughs> yeah. Fuck me. Um, and I'll do. Oh wow. Is it good? The pillows came up. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think this is what they're referring to. That was nice. Yeah. It looks like pizza. Classic mm -hmm. New Zealand recipe. Super simple compromise on shortbread and a. Caramel filling. Oh. Shortbread is pressed into the pan yeah. as a crust topped with the caramel. Then additional shortbread is scrambled mm -hmm. over the top for mm -hmm. a perfect buttery texture slice. Damn. I'm dieting. <laughs> <laughs> but How's that going? Yeah, really good. Good. Really good, yeah. Good. I'm down. Um, what are you doing um, I was one thirteen this morning. Okay, so you're down a couple of kilos. Yeah, three kilos down. So really good. I think I'm. Ju I'm just wanting the average, so I'm averaging it every week. Okay. So yeah. the lowest I've been this week was one twelve point two. Nice. So that's what. Like, You've got to measure it. You know, you'll be considerate of your cycle and stuff like that. Exactly. Like you, you know. And and um, <laughs> how quick can I knock you out? <laughs> how quick can I knock you out? Um, Anything else? Another one? Yeah. Do you like thick base and thick caramel or thin base and thick caramel? I like a thin base with thick caramel. Okay. I'm, I'm in that club. I'm the thin base, thick caramel, caramel. club. Yeah. Oh, caramel. I've never had a caramel slice. What? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Get out of your own house, fool. <laughs> but I assume I would be a thick base. I like them thick. <laughs> oh, yeah, she do. Okay, that's it. That's all you got? That's all I got. Okay, give me a second. Two more than I had. I've got a few more, but. Um, yeah, really good. Yeah. Do the best ones. We, we. Um, okay. Shot every time you squat or have elbow tendonitis pain every time you bench? <laughs> I'd have both. Um, <laughs> he's got both. I'd yeah. trade him elbow pain. Head yeah. time. Elbow shot pain. when squatting. No, it's shot when squat. Like, how much shot? Shot. Well, like, it's like. You picked yourself. You, you've shot yourself. Like, you've, you've shotted, you've squirted. Can you continue? Like, can you finish your session? Well, no. Well, you can change your underwear. You probably should change your underwear. We'll yeah. say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we haven't really shouted if you if you if you don't have to change underwear. I mean, we have to establish what what classifies as a shot. shot. A shot. So I assume you've shouted in your underwear, and it doesn't matter how much you've shouted in your underwear. If you shouted, you should be checking and changing your drawers. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking sick fucking kid. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm talking to Tony about this hygiene issue. We've already had this conversation. <laughs> She's fine with it. Yeah, but that's every time you squat. Oh, every time. Like every squat. rep. You I'm shot a, a little I'm bit. Saying, I'm saying every rep. It <laughs> says every time you squat. So I'm assuming every rep. Okay, no. Well, elbow tendon. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck, it's annoying, bro. I'm close. Yeah. I'm like on the fence. Yeah. I couldn't. Z? Uh, uh, elbow. elbow. You would take the elbow pain. Elbow pain. And you wouldn't shut. I would not shut. Okay. What about you? I'd shut. Yeah. 100%. 200%. It's real yeah. fucking diaper and fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't an option. Or a butt plug. Or a butt plug. Oh, as recommended by the latest research. There you go. It yeah. works. Thank you, Ann Arbor, Michigan. 
You're sick <laughs> freaks. <laughs> Shit breeding specialists. Fucking hell. Uh, that was a good question. Uh, <laughs> on topic, right? Yeah. yeah. Why is this entire podcast that good? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, <God. laughs> hell. If you had to choose three compound movements to work on daily, which three would you cover for a whole body workout? Ah, uh, good question. All eyes on you. Why am I going first? It doesn't matter. We'll see which first last time. Can it be like variations of squats and stuff like that? Whatever. So the four Pick three, three movements. Mm. Compound movements. Poor squats, good mornings, Ooh. and feet up bench. Oh, why? Because they're the most effective ones for bank for buckers. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Feet up. Compound. Okay. I'll go overhead press, uh, back squat, and... Just a straight back squat? Yep. And... Probably a clean pool. Are we compound? Yeah. 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 It's a compound. It's a barbell. <laughs> I don't know why. I looked at you and asked that question. Yeah, yeah. I'll go then. Um, what right. was yours again? Poor squat. Poor squat. Feet up bench. Feet up bench. Good morning. And a good morning. <clears throat> well, good morning is interchangeable with like some sort of. Ah, you made your answer. You made your answer. Get hey. fucked. Hey, I'm going to say that because that's what's in my program. Hey, right now. wise man once said. <laughs> you make your bed? Um, I nearly agree with Z. High bar squat. Overhead press or an incline. What's the goal? Like, like, whole body. Whole body. Whole body. So any, like a, anyone. Not a power lifter, not a no, weight lifter. Not. Yeah, you're on track, so yeah, high bar. I'm gonna go high bar, incline, and um, a clean pull. Fuck you, Zoran. <laughs> what do you want? Where the fuck did I go first? <laughs> we, we know things. <laughs> I didn't think the question through. I'll well, it from power you lose. Lose. You you lose. Lose. It's okay, I'll be better. Listen, All listen. Right. <laughs> Do sumo deadlifts mean you eat ass? Ass. Asking for a friend. I don't do sumo then. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> when, when are you bringing KBs on the podcast? Absolutely never. All the time. Oh, I have asked that. Must yeah. be all those people that want him on there. Uh, what's more, impo- more important, length or girth? Girth. It doesn't. <laughs> what are you looking at that for? Because I know you're going to be in the most trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. What do you, you mean? It doesn't matter. You're going to pick one. Yeah. Length or girth? I'll pick mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm big sleeping inside my house. <laughs> Pick your own yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you picking? Next question. Next question. Right, next question. Next question. All right. That, this next question is a, is a deeper question, which I think is going to take up a bit of time, which is... What, oh, we're going to get serious. Give me serious for a change there. Why are you going to look at me? <laughs> Why fucking look at you? <laughs> what are your thoughts on transgenders competing in sporting events? It's a controversial one. That's a good. That's a good question. I disagree. I disagree. I think it should be a whole separate division. And if mm. there is enough people, to, enough transgenders to compete in that division, I mean, you have a look mm. at powerlifting. Sometimes you get one super heavyweight turn up and they win first. So if they want to be inclusive in events. What? You get one super heavy and they win? Yeah, because there's no one else to compete against. So if you've got okay. weight divisions, yeah, right? Yeah. So let's say, yeah, yeah. Mm. So you have X amount of athletes per weight division, mm. and in the super heavyweight, sometimes you might get one, two, three. So they're automatically going to play automatically going to place first, second, and third. Yeah, yeah. national champion, national one of one, right. yeah, one of one. All right, right. So, WRPF champion. So if we're going to go down the line of being mm. inclusive of these type of athletes, that should be mm. a whole separate division. And I think it's going to encourage other transgenders to compete at that level too. Then. Mm. Because not everyone has the courage to go and 
do that. Mm. I'm not. I'm not sure the process is to apply for an Olympic spot, but I'm assuming it's an it's an extensive process. Yeah, because I know from powerlifting's perspective, yeah, the sh the the shit that the that Robert had had to go through all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it's not even close to being on the map. Yeah. So. Hmm. So, hang on. Um, what was the question? <clears throat> wow. What are your thoughts on transgenders competing in sporting events? Well, they should. I, I think they should. Because, I don't know, I feel a lot of people blame athletes rather than the federations that make criteria. And a good example of that is Lauren, who is a weightlifter. Um, <clears throat> and... I don't know her whole story, but she's now going to the Olympics. Um, that's a transgender. Uh, she, well, she's transgender. Is this what's been in the media lately? Is this what? There's been a few. There's, There's been, been a yeah. few. And um, everyone's attacking her, but she's meeting a criteria. Correct. It's not up to the athlete. It's up to, like you exactly. said, it's up to the IOC. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So then, you know, she's like, I'm assuming, like, I see all the comments and stuff. Like, there's like so many death threats. People are saying, oh, well, I'm going to become a woman and win. And so, well, you, you, then you're not really a transgender. Those people don't understand. the spirit of the game. Yeah. Exactly. And that's that's the issue. So people are blaming the athletes rather than the, the federations that are the making these criteria. You know, and then you're getting females who have high testosterone, but then are not eligible to compete in the Olympics. Mm. And you're just like, well, hang on, that's the natural testosterone levels. What are you talking about? Mm. So then it's a, it goes back to, all right, well then, well, it's a range, isn't it? Yeah, that was that was the range. criteria for this particular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like you know, it's, it doesn't make. Is sense. it quite a broad range? Well, it doesn't sound like it. I don't know. For, who, for the weightlifter it's... or for the sprinter? It would be the same range. Yeah. yeah. So I then, think. So then this, this, the weightlifter will be, you know, uh, will be looked at a lot harder than all the other athletes. So she would probably have to get more, she'll get tested more often than any other athlete. Mm -hmm. um, she would have to continually pass. You'd assume so. You'd assume I'll so. Assume Even so, though it's I'd meant to be uh, impartial. I think, I'm sure yeah. testing is meant to be impartial. They don't just test people. Yeah. For whatever, allegedly. Uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, people have got the wrong idea. Or they're attacking someone else when it's like they're they're not the they're not the problem. Yeah. So and if they're passionate about the sport mm -hmm. and if they're good at it, mm -hmm. where else are they going to compete? But also we're talking about weightlifting um, <clears throat> in the world. So like all the athletes that get done for doping, um, nobody bats an eye. All the female lifters that get done for doping when she that the other weightlifter will probably get tested more often than the other athletes mm. well, I assume should be more yeah. looked at do you know what I mean there's so many other people that get t tested positive uh, especially in weightlifting and then um, you know everyone's all up in arms who don't even watch weightlifting yeah. or don't even watch the track and field everyone's you know? quick to, to cry check. everyone's quick to, yeah. to yeah. complain yeah everyone's quick to complain I, th I think so, like going off with what, with what you're saying I'm, mm. I'm in total agreement with what, with what you're saying about it's not the athlete's fault mm. it's the IOC's fault yeah um I think the other thing is um if we were to park the backlash that she's she's gotten mm. she's not going to meddle anyway even though she is was born male yeah. which is fucked when yeah. you really think about it yeah. in the grand scheme of things she's not going to meddle yeah unless you know she Stephen Bradbury's it yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah. that just sort of makes you go fuck all of shit if, if we're if we're complaining that she's going to have male genetics uh, and male born advantages how fucking insane are the women I was about to say mm -hmm. how yeah. good are do like dominating the girls at the top yeah right yeah. the Chinese the Russians and yeah. all that sort of shit so um, I think where it gets really really blurry is the situation and we have to there needs to be a common sense approach mm -hmm. just like anything else mm -hmm. like that, that situation in uh, I think it was a Tongan lifter and I, I could I could have butchered I could have butchered it um, I'm quite sure it was a Tongan lifter where she has qualified for the Olympic team and she'd only fairly recently, um, uh, kept, I don't know how to say it, but identified as a female and she had spent 35 years of her mm -hmm. life as a male mm -hmm. and then now makes the Olympic team mm -hmm. for Tonga uh, at like, I don't know, somewhere between 35 and 40. Mm. No. Yeah. that's definitely not fair mm. um, 
give out. So, but again, they can start taking it. Well, for a whole loads of stuff like that, which will bring them. Well, I think they have to for twelve months before they can pay. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, they have to take. Um, yeah. So you've got. Oh, so you've got the mail. Yeah. The but also, who cares? Like, yeah. I'll take the estrogen for twelve months. I'll, you know, fuck. What about the thirty-five years before? That? But this, <laughs> this is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then that—that's not the whole idea when you're coming out to, like, as a transgender. I don't think. I don't think. Um, do you know what I mean? Like that mm. mindset isn't why people come out. Yeah, I don't, no, think, they, I don't think they plan to go around. When I turn 35, when I identify as a female, I'm getting gold next That's what I mean. That's what people think that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people are like, well, I identify as a dog. It's like, hang on, what are you talking about? <laughs> it does. Yeah. It really does. Both part pig, part dog. Well, we don't know. <laughs> so. um, I think the other thing is, is what, what I think whether IOC are like being, I don't know, ignorant about it, like this opportunity. Like, although mm-hmm. this is a situation where it's a lot of people obviously. And roughly so, uh, to their from their opinion, are in uh, uh, uproar about it. It's an opportunity for the IOC to take advantage of the situation, mm-hmm. go create another, I don't know, go create another Olympic mm-hmm. Games and turn that into a proper business itself. Yep. And then put back into that uh, L, 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 LBGTQ plus community. Mm. You're welcome. Yeah. Nice. All right. More questions? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a good question. That was a deep question, you're right. I need to look, I need to look that up, look it yeah, up I more. I like wasn't prepared. I yeah, didn't I'll have the research. Well. That's what Taz Weld is. Well, yeah, but there's not, nothing wrong. No, it's not. That's what I mean. Like, there's not. nothing, there's no wrong or right. And people, they live like, you know, they live like they know what's wrong or right. It's like, oh, well, no, you don't. <clears throat> Like, you know, you don't go through the struggles that somebody else does. We learned, we learned that in neuroscience, didn't we? Mm-hmm. About, um, you've got the biological gender, and also there's another, there's, a, there's um, who you are. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, like, into, like, men, like, in mentally. So your biological gender doesn't define who you are. Okay. Did you go, did you go through that? It does ring a bell. Yeah. Yeah. That's what made me realise, like, oh, like, you don't. The the brain chemistry doesn't match the biological chemistry. Yeah. Is it brain chemistry? Uh, It's just who you are, though. Who you are. are. Your, what would you call it? Your soul, your character, your. Yeah, yeah. Your your internal feelings. And then you get people who who, who are, like, I I identify as a female, but then don't come out till their 20s. Um, and it's just like, well, dude, you've lived your t- last 20 years not true to yourself. Like, that's sad. Yeah. You know, like, that's sad. They've been pretending. Yeah. Because they're to too be someone else to come because out. Of yeah. The, yeah. The backlash that they get. And, you know, right. it, yeah, it's terrible. So, Caitlyn Jenner, when he was Bruce. Yeah. Was he Caitlyn all that time? You don't know. Or, I don't know enough about Somewhere that. deep down, I don't assume so. Yeah, because yeah, like yeah. there was, there was, there was like when the whole thing came out, there was talk about hmm. him, like many, many years ago, like even at like events and stuff, like he would dress up, like heavily disguise a woman and go out and dance and stuff like that. This was like at hmm. the peak of his career, apparently. And he, allegedly. Yeah, hmm. allegedly. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, let's end on this question. Let's end on a good question. Uh, how did you all get into strength training? Wow. Oh, um, I think back in 2001 or 2010. So... One or 10? No, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> 2010 or 2011. Yeah. Jesus. Jeez, that was terrible. You carried the zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're the banker. <laughs> um, was. Was. <laughs> Damn. That you was fucked it up. Wow. Uh, <laughs> um, I started, once I came back from overseas, so I ran a marathon, went overseas for three months, came back, um, and then I went, I started training just at a commercial gym, doing power cleans and things like that. So I started like doing weightlifting movements. So that was your first... Yeah. Experience at the gym. Yeah. So you went straight into it. So you weren't yeah. like a bro lifter. No. Nah. What'd you learn how to do the lifts? YouTube. I just, no, I just did it myself. 
No, just, I, just there was, I had a book. I had a book. Okay. I forgot what book that was. It was like it had programs in it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And um, I just yeah learned from the teachers. Oh wow, I completely forgot about that. You just you just actually reminded me how I got into it. It's really fucking cool. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, I just looked at the pictures and I started doing the movements. Um, I had a little book I used to write down all my stuff in. Um, and then yeah, and then I started looking up powerlifting gyms because I wanted to get into powerlifting. Uh, then I contacted a few people, um, and then one of those people uh, told me that uh, Frankston was like a, a uh, like a desert for powerlifting. And then I, then I found PTC, PTC. Hmm. Then I contacted Marcus, Marcus had come down, went down, a tr- um, and then I was going overseas again for two weeks, went to Singapore. Um, and then I said, yeah, I'll be back once I come back from my trip. And like, I assumed they didn't believe me. And then, yeah, and then I came I back. I believe you either. Yeah, and then I came back. What's your story? Your story sounds cool. You, you, you just triggered something. So I'm a triggerer. The myth was always, Weight training is going to stun your growth, right? How tall are you? Huge. I was, six, I, was, I, was six probably, foot, I was probably six foot when I first stepped in the weight room. Yeah. And this would have been okay. after year eight, finishing year eight, going to year nine. Yeah. I had like dumbbells at home and stuff like that, but I was always playing basketball. And yeah. I wanted to really come back after in the off season. Yeah more athletic yeah. and stuff like that. So I used to do push-up squats, skip the rope, all that stuff. Yeah. But I was always, it was ingrained in me that lifting weights mm. is going to stun my growth potential and I had yeah. potential to be someone because of my family pedigree in the basketball scene, right? <laughs> so I remember the first book that I got and I've got it right here. Ralph Sampson. Wow. Right? <laughs> this was published in, camera, in 1984. If you guys can see that, <laughs> <Wait this way. laughs> so there was a bookshop at Oakley Central. I lived across where I used to live, and I went in there and I was looking for training books to improve my basketball conditioning. And this book jumped out at me. Wow! Yeah, so I got that book, and I also went to what was that place? Sportsmart. Yeah, Sports Sports Bar. Bar. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's still there. And I'm, I think, and I saved up to buy myself a home gym. So I had like a chest press, yeah. a lat pull down, a leg extension, yeah. a seated oh, row, so and a pair of dumbbells. And that was my first introduction to weight training. That's so cool. I would replicate yeah. all the stuff in here as best as I could yeah. on that. Yeah. And then on the, on the school holiday between year eight and nine, I joined a gym in Carnegie. Yeah. Um, and that's when it all started. That's so cool. And I remember going back to school year nine, and everyone was like, "Fuck, look at his arms!" Because I was like, "Oh, he's still got big arms." Genetic triceps, right? So and then, and, and then that was it. Like I was hooked. I was hooked. Like I used to go to gym five, six days a week. Every day I'd be in there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I loved it. Loved it. And then from there. And then from there, um, a few minor basketball injuries that sort of put me into the weight room. So like ankles and stuff like that. So the boys would be training on court. We used to train, I think it was Mentone and Grandma. There used to be a gym literally looking out onto the court. So I'd be in there just mucking around with weights, pressing, yeah. pulling, that sort of that's stuff. Cool. And that's where I kind of started getting a little bit of a mental shift. I'm like, oh, this is fun. Like, Fuck team sports. Fuck having to rely on other people to win. <laughs> I've been doing this for 12 years. Maybe yeah. I should explore bodybuilding. Some individual sports. Yeah. So that's yeah, that led me into natural bodybuilding. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. How did you actually move into being a PT? So when I finished high school, it was decision making time. You know how in year 10 you have to like... you, I remember like we, we um, were talking not long after that um, and you'd done or in the process of finishing a human movement degree. It was a human movement degree, yeah. yeah. So it was a human movement degree. Like, I wanted to do it as well. I was like, I kind of feel like I want to do this, but I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a fucking wanker lawyer at the same time. Well, when I made the decision, I'm like, do I want to do something that I enjoy? <laughs> Lawyers are not wankers. I knit my knee. Like <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> I loved computers. I loved graphic design. Yeah. I loved uh, geeking out and me on technology. And back then it was like HTML programming and stuff like that. So yeah. what I did was for all my electives during the human mo- movement, I picked <laughs> IT subjects. So I was like, 
sub, not subconsciously, but like the plan, I had a plan B up my sleeve. Yeah. So when I graduated from human movement, I had to do four more units to get a second degree in IT. <laughs> I went back for one semester and I hated it. Yeah. And I just, I'm like, nah, this is not me. Yeah. Right. And then I was like, what do I do now? What do I do now? Because it's such a broad thing when you. What happened? The girl. <laughs> it's such a broad, it's such a broad, um, when you, when you finish human movement, there's no, there's no like, you're going to become a human movement specialist, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's almost like, a course to go into something else. So yeah. I wanted to be a physio. Yeah. And that was my initial thing. And then, um, but I had a job, like I was working as a security guard four nights a week at nightclubs. Mm. I was working for this small sports manufacturing printing company. So I was, I was making good yeah. cash. Only three, four years post-graduation, I ended up working at the Melbourne Sports Aquatic Center as a personal trainer, right? <laughs> wow. uh, which I got introduced to through my business partner, who, through my friend who was my business partner for the next 12 years we ended up opening up our own business oh, that's so, cool. so that's how i got into the industry yeah. and the decision going back to human movement and it it was i thought was going to make me money by human movement so being in that health and fitness industry was going to make you happy. fulfill my passion so obviously passion took over mm -hmm. yeah good choices yeah. Yeah. yeah but it's interesting i had a pivotal moment like about three four years ago being on the gym floor for 10 years i was getting a bit stale yeah and you just everything just starts becoming very predictable so a new client will walk in and yeah. you go through the induction process and you go through like what's called a breakthrough session yeah. and you're talking to them you can already you can already foresee their journey yeah. where they're going to stick around yeah where they're going to trip up whether they're going to be actually compliant with their food whether they're going to be enjoying the training all this sort of stuff yeah i got kind of like bored and stale yeah. so i'm like what's next like how can i help people on a different level and still stick within the industry and then I spoke to one of my mentors who happens to be a Cairo and I said look I'm, I've done the research yeah. it's down between osteo and Cairo what do I pick all right and he goes put it this way when you go see an osteo how long are the sessions a treatment session how long is a Cairo session he goes from a business point of view mm. like you're essentially gonna be learning the same thing yeah yeah, yeah. but from a business point of view I'm like, yeah, cool. It's not all about business, but then I looked more into it and I ended up doing Cairo. So yeah. now I'm in the process of studying Cairo, yeah. three years in, two years to go until I graduate. Mm. And then the next plan is put in place. Cool. Yeah. So that's, that went a little bit off the tangent, but yeah, yeah. that's that. Cool. You? Um, I will high level this because it's going to ruin my video this week. Um, I um, started in Olympic lifting um, through high school and then Olympic lifting from high school just turned into, I didn't do anything for, I, did, I was an Olympic lifter for, for nearly three years and then, um, so from 11 till 14, I was Olympic lifting and then didn't do anything until I was about 22, 22, mm -hmm. 21, 22, um, wanted to impress girls at uni. Um, so I got in the gym, <laughs> <laughs> failed miserably. <laughs> uh, and then, just impressed the guys. Yeah, just impressed the guys. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best. Because all chicks love someone that can squat a thousand pounds. Yeah. Like, that's all they dream about. Yeah. I spent the next part of, like four years trying to be Mr. Olympia, and then um, did my first powerlifting comp um, at twenty four, and then powerlifted since twenty four. Here we are. 24, and now yeah. I'm thirty five. Nice. Nice. I'm 31. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> Good. I think we should end that. Okay. I'm this note. <laughs> and I'm Demir. <laughs> I've got no biceps. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was so good. Dude, that start. <laughs>